to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. At the Bear Wozniak uh, Adventure, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the radical adventure of God's will, to go out into the deep with the Lord, not to spend all your time in the shallow waters. And I learned a kind of a, a, a real lesson uh, two days ago. Uh, I was out, Normally I here in Waikiki, I paddle out. I'm right on the beach here in Waikiki, right next to the Catholic Church, by the way. If you've been here, St. Augustine's Church, I'm looking right down at basically where the altar is from my office here. Paddled out past Queens Beach, paddled out past Canoes, paddled out to Pops, pad, you know, and caught a wave at every one of those breaks, out to Paradise, out to Threes, out to Fours, beyond Kaisers, in-betweens. And then on my way back, uh, the day before, I had warned my wife, uh, when I came back, I came in more in the shallow area. Normally, I'm surfing about a third of a mile out. And I told her, this area right here of the boneyards, be careful, because, uh, you know, you can uh, easily uh, t- get tweaked and end up wiping out on this real shallow, sharp coral. Well, so what happened is uh, I, I, you know, did all these paddles, and I'm coming in feeling really good. And I got into the, I got a long ride, and I got kind of into where the boneyards are, the boneyard is, and I could have could have paddled back out, but I thought, I'll just take a shortcut. And ended up, uh, while I was in the shallows, my leash grabbed a coral head, and I took a, I took a dive. Uh, pretty good refresh on my, on my, on my back and uh, on my elbow. Uh, because I was in the shallow end of the pool. Um, God is calling us as Catholics to go out into the deep. We, we, we need to uh, be able, we need to explore our humanity. Our, uh, we need to explore who God is. We need to explore uh, our individual sexuality. A male, uh, God made uh, men in his, made us in His image, male and female, and understand begin to understand uh, the theology of the body and the the genius, the feminine genius. Really explore going deeper because when you understand a human anthropology, uh, you get a better grip on on what it is to be fully alive and to be fully human. I really it, the the truth is getting right down to it. You can't be fully human unless you've abandoned yourself to God's will, surrendered yourself to his love, because you're meant to be infused but with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's like uh, an appliance that just never plugged in, if you, or, a, or, a, or a fruit tree that, <clears throat> whose roots never went deep, and you just don't become fully all that God has, you to, has planned for you. So then the next day, I went out uh, 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 surfing. Uh, so this was two days ago when I got the reef ration. Then yesterday I went out, went way out into the deep, and uh, there was just one or two other people out as far as I was, about a half a mile out. And I was rewarded with big, hollow, beautiful waves. Uh, just just gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful blue day, crystal clear water, so clear you could hardly see the wave while you were surfing in it. So I'm inviting you today with our guest, Genevieve Kaneke, to uh, come out into the deep. Let's explore, some, let's explore something, some uh, deeper understanding of the feminine genius and all you knuckle draggers out there I'm giving you a warning you may want to you may want to not listen to this one uh, this might be too too challenging we should give we should have this warning that we are going to by understanding the feminine genius we are going to challenge uh, the knuckle draggers out there to try to understand uh, understand uh, women better so aloha uh, Genevieve I, I love your name by the way it's one of my favorite names oh I'm so glad I love it also thank you yeah, it's it just, I don't know. What what does it mean? Do you know what it means? Uh, you're not going to believe this. It means the great white wave. The great white wave? Go figure. That's interesting. That is that is crazy. But I was born in a French city, so my parents said, hey, why not? So there you go. <laughs> you know, I, I've surfed a wave in, I know I used to surf every year in France, and I've surfed a wave in France, very unusual. I would call it the great brown wave. Oh. Because have you ever okay. heard of the, have you ever heard of the masquerade? I have not. Okay, there's a tidal bore in France. Uh, the, because the, the Fran- France's tides can swing 12 feet from new moon to on the new moon and the full moon. We're here in okay. Hawaii, a two-foot sw- two swing in tide would be, you know, 
you know, kind of somewhat extreme. So in uh, in uh, France, up in Bordeaux, <clears throat> there's a big muddy river. I, th- I forget the name of it. I think it might be called the Mascarette. But as it's 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 gosh, it must be an eighth of a mile wide or a quarter of a mile wide, really wide river, and it's flowing down into the ocean. And on the new and the and the full moon, that when the tide's the most extreme, that water, the ocean, wants to come up that river. But it's flowing so hard that it stops the rising tide from flowing up. And then all at one moment, it breaks through. And it sends a wave 60 to 70 kilometers up that river. So we get our boards and we go about 16 kilometers up from the ocean, paddle out. on. We kind of walk out of the slippery, muddy kind of like dock, get into the water, and then we float downstream. And then all of a sudden you hear this mighty roar. And from around the bend comes one wave. And you got to paddle and catch it. You, uh, I've ridden it for twelve kilometers, but uh, so so you know a little bit, little, little a little bit about surfing because your daughter's involved in the World Surf League. Yes, she was. She was a graphic designer there. And um, as a matter of fact, I remember a couple years ago there was a um, a tournament in Aquitaine, and she mm-hmm. was uh, you know setting up the graphics for that. I I'm not sure where exactly that is in France or how close it was to your brown wave, but um, yeah, <laughs> they they have competitions all over the world. Well, you know, the, the the when I look at the WSL, the World Surf League graphics, I go, yes. I want those graphics. I will for... send you some. I've I've got a bunch of tchotchkes here, so well, I'll send she, you some. But is she still? What is she? Is she doing this uh, still? Do a graphic art artist still? Uh, no, she moved over to Vans. I guess they sell oh, my... some kind of sh- shoes yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've heard of them. Well, they're a big sponsor yeah, they... on the, They're a big sponsor on the World Tour, and I remember when I was a kid. When I saw Vans, I was like, oh, only that's only for the rich people, you know. My parents would never get me those, you know. But, well, but, it, it was it, a very Vans Christmas. We're all wearing Vans now. <laughs> uh, I, lo- I love, uh, yeah, I love the, the Kennedy family, yeah. We love what the Vans, what Vans does for the surfing, surfing community. So, yeah, no, uh, but so she's still doing the graphic design, but for Vans, huh? For now, she's for Vans, and I guess they have a, a surf line as well, so. Well, yeah, so, so you know, so Vans became famous in the, the world of sidewalk surfing, skateboarding. Which exactly. is invented by surfers, and so they were—they were the shoe to have. For some reason, they gave you just the right kick. Uh, of course, when I was a kid, when I started, we had like metal wheels. You hit a piece of sand, and you would go right. flying, you know. So, but I just got my daughter. She's 37 years old. She's a surf champion. She lives in Santa Fe. I just bought her a big, nice, five-foot-long uh, uh, sidewalk skateboard so she can cruise through Santa Fe, kind of sidewalk. No surfing. metal wheels. No metal wheels. <laughs> uh, so you must have done good raising her. How many children do you guys have, you and Charlie? Uh, we have five children. Uh, that child is the fourth. Uh, I have uh, three daughters and two sons. The youngest is just a freshman in college. The oldest is in her 30s. Well, you, we're kind of in the same. My, my kids are a little bit older. But, you know, the, the people who usually listen to this show, you know, you've never. Now, you guys, Genevieve has never listened to my radio show. She never even knew I had a motorcycle TV show. She's never read any of my books. Do you think we should just turn this, turn off this interview? No, but you know what happens when we start the show? There's a sound of motorcycles racing. Oh, my. So all these knuckle draggers out there are like, what are you doing with this woman? The great, white, the great, yeah. white, the great white wave, that's her, her name Genevieve means. Yeah. But you guys, you knuckle draggers out there, you Neanderthals, listen, because she's got a message for women who are listening and men uh, from John Paul II's Letter to Women, 1995, The Feminine Genius. Uh, what is the name of your book, The Authentic Catholic Woman? Yes, I love that word authentic because uh, we, we, there's so many different little cubby holes of women and everything else. But the church has one message. And it was very hard for me to discover that message. I was a, okay, I was a rebel in college. You may have been a rebel. I was a rebel. But my rebellion was to join the Catholic Church because I wasn't Catholic. And uh, this was before the Internet, before John Paul II, before the catechism before RCIA. And uh, I was always drawn to the church, but I was also a nerd. And it wasn't that I didn't feel feminine. I just kept thinking, okay, now I'm Catholic. What am I supposed to do? But why did you become Catholic? I had Catholic? no idea. Why did you become Catholic? Grace. Well, I thought I read my way into the church, and then later I discovered it's just all grace. God, God tugs, and you just either cooperate or you don't. And so I, I happened to cooperate. Always wanted to go deeper, always wanted to know God. But then once you become Catholic, the driving question for me was, how do I live in the image and likeness of God as a woman? 
So when your your feet hit the floor in the morning, you have to say, all right, so what do I do? I've got to find that an amount of energy. And I was kind of an oddball because I was a uh, very bookish, very um, more academic than, than athletic or anything like that. Or even, I you know, I prefer to sit inside and read a book. That's my life. I love so, reading. I love reading. Hours every day. I'd spend the whole yes. day if I could. Surf oh, and read. There Surf you and go. read. Glad eat, eat and sleep. Surf, read, and sleep. <laughs> yeah. So um, what I needed, um, since I was a very logical thinker, I said, how do I live as a woman in the image and likeness of God? And you can look at all these different people. You Obviously, you look at the Blessed Mother. You look at this saint, that saint, the women in your life and all you know. And I go, all right, what's the secret? How do I break the code? Okay, well, let, let's do this. Let's leave yes. that as the cliffhanger okay. at the end of this segment. Because Genevieve, her name means the Great White Wave, Genevieve has broken the code so men can understand women and what the feminine genius is. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Yesterday when I looked out my window, I saw... Ex Excruciatingly beautiful blue water, blue water, blue uh, sky, and today it's raining outside, and just a cozy feeling, you know. And when, in Hawaii, we call rain bless the uh, blessings. Believe me, in the island, you need rain, and so I didn't have anything better to do, so I thought I would interview Genevieve Kaneki, who's the author of uh, Authentic Catholic, the Authentic Catholic Woman, and uh, it, it has focused her life on theology of the body and the letter of Saint uh, of Saint John Paul II to women. Uh, they wrote in 1995 on the on the feminine genius. So, all you knuckle draggers out there, uh, we want you to to listen in. But before we get started, I want to thank Solidarity Healthshare. They're uh, a great company that really believes in our show, and we really believe in them. A couple of my family members use them. It, they're kind of like an insurance company, but not quite that. But they were grandfathered in when Obamacare came in, that allowed them to continue what they're doing, and we love them because so many insurance companies now are funding. Uh, things that you wouldn't want that are contrary to Catholic teaching. And so uh, so uh, Brad Hahn over there and the other people that have been very brave and courageous in developing this product, and we, I, I can 100% uh, recommend them to you. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and find out more about Solidarity Health. They're down at the bottom of our page, and you just click. And then my people out at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, I love those people. I walked into their, walked into their offices uh Last fall, and I had sent uh, Tom Gripe, the CEO there, had bought some of my Seven Virtue cigar samplers from uh, the DeepAdventure.com uh, store. Uh, seven different cigars that, that uh, talk about the Seven Virtues on, on their labels. And I uh, just was greeted so warmly, and, and uh, they've been so good. When I was shooting Long Ride Home Season uh, 4 out here in Hawaii, we were shooting 12, 16-hour days. And, uh, and they worked with me while I was over by cell phone. Uh, over the course of a week to uh, finance a, a used car that I was buying here. So we love a uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, so you can go there to find more about them too. So we're here with, we're here with uh, Genevieve Konecki, and uh, all you Neanderthals, I know you probably can't write, but uh, try to get a piece of paper out and take notes because she's going to explain to us. Genevieve, I used to talk about masculine spirituality. I don't do that anymore. Because of all this confusion out there, I just say manly spirituality. Sounds womanly good. womanly spirituality, manly virtue. Yes. Your book, The Authentic Catholic Woman, uh, it, you know, that's what it's saying, not the authentic Catholic feminine. I mean, we, no. I mean femini we need to understand femininity, but woman and Catholic yes. and authentic, what does that mean? What that means is the paradigm that I discovered Finally, a few years into being Catholic, you know, as I was finding my bearings and figuring out what to do as I was married and having children and, and to say, what does it mean to be in the image and likeness of God as a woman? The paradigm for women is to live as an icon of Holy Mother Church. And you say, okay, well, okay, that's what, what the heck does that mean? But you have to understand how we look at the church. There's two different ways to look at the church. There's the guy side of the church, which is the hierarchy you know, from the Pope and the Cardinals and the Archbishops and Bishops all the way down to the uh, the permanent deacons, those men live as an icon of the bridegroom. And so that's one way to look at the church that's fine. 
And of course, there's there's the way you can look at it as as a pasture and sheep, and you can look at it as a sheepfold and or, you know, the the great ark with with all the people coming in. You, you know, the uh, the bark of Peter. You can look at it like that. The way for women to look at the church should be the church as virgin bride and mother. And you say, in that sense, what does the church do? Well, the beautiful thing that you have in Catholic land that we didn't have back in Protestantville is a sacramental understanding of the universe. And that means that everything, everything matters. Amen. That's everything. As uh, Therese of Lisieux said, I can pick up a pin and join it to the passion of Christ and save souls. Everything can be a bearer of grace. So when a woman looks at the church, she says, how do I live as an icon? What does the church do? Well, you can look at the seven sacraments. You've got the um, the church washes and she heals and she reconciles. She builds culture. She buries the dead. She nurses the sick. She um, church's mother and teacher, moderate magistra. You look at the, the four marks of the church, one holy Catholic and apostolic. You can look at the church in the Old Testament. You can look at the church at the end. The backdrop to all of creation is nuptial. And so, especially at this time when people are so confused about what is the vocation of woman, what is the vocation of man, the woman's paradigm is the church and says, if the church does this, then I should be doing this. But the beauty is, and this is absolutely key, Bear, bear, this is key. Every woman will do it differently because I have different gifts. I have a different age than other people. I'm living in this particular century. I have this particular husband, these personalities in my home, maybe, you know, extended family who needs help. I might be able to, it's not, see, when we were young, the battles 30 years ago would be, should we work? Shouldn't we work? Do you have kids? Don't you have kids? NFP, not F NFP, all this other kind of stuff. And, and that has its place. Once you have the paradigm in place, then you say, this is how I do it. If I had sisters, each of them would be doing it differently. My grandmother would be doing it differently. My granddaughters will be doing it differently. But every woman on the planet can fit in this paradigm according to her gifts, her calling, the personalities that she's dealing with, and it will differ when you're 20, 40, 60, 80. So as I mentioned, I'm bookish, I'm kind of nerdy. So the church as teacher is something that I love. A nurse or a doctor would say the church as the healer of the sick is what what is what I do. Um, the church's mother, you might have, you know, one, two, ten children. Um, but this all changes. And and it can change for every woman. There's room for everybody. And what this does is it frees you from stereotypes. Amen. And it gives you yeah, it, you have a multitude of saints that you can choose from. And it doesn't mean that you don't like some. You just say, okay, God bless her. Her life is so different from mine, that's not helpful to me at this moment. But this woman over here, this is helpful to me. You've got, you know, hundreds, thousands of saints that you can choose from who will help to give you guidance in any given situation. But the beauty about the paradigm is, is that you stop staring at your neighbor, the woman in the pew, your mother, all these other women who are doing it differently. You keep your eyes on the tabernacle and you say, this is how I need to do it. And the beautiful thing is, is there, there used to be a saying as, as, as you might, if you're the only Christian someone sees, you might be the only church anybody sees. They're not going to darken the door of Our Lady of the Swamps down the road, but they have a contact with you. You see them in the checkout stand at the grocery store. You see them in the classroom. You see them in the cubicle in your, your cube farm. You see them all over the place. And one thing the church does is she welcomes her arms are open, the doors are open, and she welcomes people into her bosom. And then the next is absolutely key. She is the entree to God the Father. She is the gateway bringing people and reconciling people with God the Father. They need to come through Holy Mother Church. And that's why the work of women is key. And another reason why the brokenness, the brokenness of women is utterly disastrous in this journey to God the Father when you're creating instead of a an open door to, to God you're creating static on the line or or a closed door which is the worst thing possible 
Well said. You know, in, in Hawaii, there's a tradition of womanhood of being a bay with wide arms wide open, a safe harbor. Beautiful. Yeah, sanctuary. Yes, that's yeah. who we are, the sanctuary. It, you know, beautiful. Yeah, you know, um, the... <laughs> Everything you've said is just so is so powerful. I just see myself taking notes, taking notes, taking notes. Um, the beauty, the the unique uh, beauty of 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 anyone is that when we're when we're conceived, God infuses within us a unique spiritual, rational soul. Yes. Even if we were conceived in a in the worst possible situation, a rape, or something like that, the 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 DNA, the physical DNA comes from the from the mother and father, but the spiritual DNA. Uh, comes from God himself. God loves you. God willed you to be uh, this unique uh, person, this unique uh, gifts, the, the unique spiritual DNA uh, of who you are in your spirit, soul, soul, and body, your mind, will, and emotion. And you, uh, when you abandon yourself to God's will, you don't become less of who you are. You become who you fully are meant to be fully alive. It's, it's what uh, Genevieve said earlier about how you find a place where you fit. Uh, so often in our society, it's like if you're going to be a jigsaw puzzle, you got to cut off part of what you are to fit into society. But when you give your life to the Lord, you fit. In other words, you're in order. You're connected just properly. In Hawaii, we make uh, uh, stone walls without any concrete to keep them together. Uh, and the, the bottom stones are called the Nihau stones. Uh, and you can almost define what the wall is going to look like, how wide, how high, by the way the Nihau st stones are placed. And then the stones are interlocked so that if you hit them with a truck, it wouldn't knock it over. Uh, but they, it doesn't use any concrete. That's the picture of the church where we're interlocking stones, each with its beautiful expression of who we are, not less of who we are, fully who we are, but uh, locking in together. Uh, we got to go. We'll be right back. We'll, we'll be right back. We're just leaving for a moment. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're with Genevieve Konecki. We're talking about the feminine genius. So all you knuckle draggers, don't go away. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My producers remind me that I want you guys, please, go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, and push the subscribe button. Watching our show, we love that you watch it, but if you push subscribe, then YouTube will become an evangelist. They'll begin to share and, and promote our show more. And so you can see our guest Genevieve uh, by going there. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on last week's radio show, and that'll take you there too. Or you can go to our website and subscribe to our weekly newsletter, which comes out, and uh, we send you that week's radio show in a YouTube version before EW10 even airs it. So we invite you to go to our website, subscribe to our, our email list, and then we want to invite the men, especially you women. You should be bringing your men in front of our, the computer and say, join Bear's Man Cave. We have a, a, man, a secret Facebook group. You cannot join it by going to Facebook. You've got to go to deepadventure.com. You pay $10 a month to be a member, and then you join the man cave, and there you'll find men that are every, every sort of, uh, um, uh, like pe newly, con newly converted or people that are questioning, all the way up to really some really smart guys. We've got Matthew Leonard as one of our members, for example. But we challenge, we equip, we mobilize, we share with each other what we need prayer for, and then every two or three weeks we have a Zoom video meetup where we all can see each other, and we read through one of my books right now. We're reading through Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, which is designed to be read in small groups. And in the last meeting, we had two new men, two men there who said, by the time of the next meeting, I'm going to have started a men's group like this in my own church. So a lot of times, like the That Man Is You program, we love it. And there's other formal men's programs, but sometimes... You need to just sit on the back deck of your of your house with a shot of whiskey and a cigar and uh, have more of an informal dialogue because a lot of men would never want to go into a, the basement of a church or the church hall to, to get this. But And that's why we, why, why we have the Seven Virtues Cigar Sampler based on the Seven Virtues. When you smoke, when you go to the website, you get, get that packet, invite men over, and you can't smoke the cigar without unpeeling the label. And inside that label is a saying from one of my books on one of the seven virtues. So men, time to man up, join the man cave. And now listen in, guys. Um, I'm going to turn the tables 
We have Genevieve Konecki here. She is an authentic Catholic woman. I can vouch for it because I saw her husband, Charlie, in there uh, walking like a <laughs> robot. He was actually doing the robot thing behind her 15 <laughs> minutes ago. So she's got him well-trained. So we want to see if she can help you uh, Neanderthals out there to get a little bit understanding. So I'm going to turn the tide now, Genevieve. Um, your heart and your passion is just is just to infuse a uh, hope and understanding to women. I can see that. Uh, but but now turn your attention uh, to men. What would you say to men about the feminine genius? Genius. How can they comprehend? What is their complementarity there? Okay. I'm going to start with uh, sonar technology, just because there are um, a few, as you say, knuckle draggers out there, and I think they will understand this. I, I see men pinging off of women. Are you with me, Bear? With Absolutely. I, I, okay, I, I hear the sonar of the dolphins sometimes when I swim, when I surf, oh, when I'm underwater. How cool is yeah, that? Yeah, so I get, I get that completely. I get what you're saying yes. completely, yeah. I, I think men are wonderful. I think their hearts are gold, their intentions are pure, and they want to be everything that they are called to be. The difficulty right now, especially in this generation, is, is like good men, they're pinging off the women. But the women are confused. The women don't know what they want. They've been... Um, you know, assaulted, barraged with decades and decades of very confused feminists who keep saying, this will make you happy, that will make you happy, the other will make you happy, and everything else like that. So they're, they're not sure where they ought to be. You and I both talked about the sanctuary, about the, the, the harbor, the, the safe place where a woman should be. She's not happy. The man who's pinging off of her has no idea. The, the signals are confused, the, the feedback is, is, is chaotic from her, and he backs off and he's not sure what he's supposed to do. To go back to the paradigm about the woman as an icon of the church, what is the job of the bridegroom? His job is to lay down and die for her, which I know, Bear, you do on a daily basis for your loved ones. Charlie does for me. All the wonderful men I know do this. How can you die in service of someone who's utterly confused and she changes from day to day what she even wants or who she even really is. I'm putting the onus on us. I think you guys are awesome and I know that you're doing the best you can with a bunch of confused women in your life. I always say to men, you know, if you let me, if you invite me in to do a retreat for the women in your life, guys, your life is gonna be a lot better. <laughs> it's all about you guys. That said, the vocation of the church, all of those different elements that I mentioned beforehand, the ultimate vocation of the church is to love. So however we get there, whatever corner of the church we're living in as an icon of is to love. Why won't women love? Because they've been hurt. We've made a lot of stupid decisions over a lot of crazy years, especially young adulthood, you know, even late adolescence and everything else like that. We loved genuinely, and between our family of origin, our first three husbands, you know, all of the nonsense that goes out there, the, the boss, the kids, and everything else, you pull back because you loved and you got hurt. That's a fallen world. Everybody's mm. been hurt. The message that the church says is you need to forgive. And that's where it gets shaky for women because they need to be in a vulnerable place and we sit down and that's my second book, The Authentic Catholic Woman's Guide to Forgiveness. Very nuts and bolts, very, very orderly book. This is how you forgive. It's like an onion, a lot of layers, a lot of tears. But the beautiful thing is, is in a, in a fallen world, everyone's going to get hurt. We know how to deal with it. It doesn't make you, it doesn't make you bulletproof it makes you transparent so that you're not afraid to love. Gentlemen, if the women in your life are difficult to read, your, your sonar is just throwing back all kinds of confused data, there's a brokenness. God bless them. They need to heal and they need to go through this process of forgiveness, which will allow them to turn around and understand what God is calling them to be, how he wishes them to disseminate the, the love of the bride in his world so that they can see their way through to God the Father. I admit we are a hot mess right now. And you guys just kind of stand around and just go, okay, <laughs> I'm out of here. I don't even know what to do or say or how to respond because I'm putting the onus on us. And, I'm, and I understand 
to the men, just pray for the women in your life that they can find the means through which to forgive those original wounds so that they're no longer afraid to love in a very healthy, dynamic, enthusiastic way. Because once we have this mother love, this is the closing documents of the Second Vatican Council. Women imbued with the spirit of the gospel are going to save mankind from falling. But we've got to get them there so they're not afraid. You know, I don't even want to ask you another question. I want to just say, can you talk some more? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> you, know, you know, one of the things I know for men, we're icons too. Uh, we need to be uh, in the image of Jesus Christ, laying down our lives exactly. for a woman. But I always challenge men, if they're not getting up an hour early every day and praying, they're posers. They should be praying the road. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it has to be an hour in the morning. Maybe it's 20 minutes in the morning and 40 minutes at night. But pray for your women. Uh, pray, pick up the rosary and pray, pray, uh, pray a rosary for your woman or the women in your life every day. That's the key. Is And then when you do that, uh, you begin to get a sense of how to uh, how your woman needs to be loved by you. You know, Cindy, uh, my wife, gets a flower just about every day. In Hawaii, believe it or not, it's harder when we're here. There used to be hibiscus right in front of our, our condo building here on, on the beach, but not anymore. But when we're in Florida, where we spend about a third of our time, she gets a hibiscus every morning. Uh, I don't know how to love her, but I know she likes that. Even if she doesn't thank me, I know she likes when she sees the fresh new hibiscus. But our heart as men, uh, we want to be outward focused. We want to be looking. We want to be outward. We want to be production oriented. We want to work. We want to provide. We want to protect. You know, we want to do all those things. But the greatest work that we have, uh, you know, the liturgy of the hours, the word liturgy means the work of the people. If you're a man, your greatest work needs to start in prayer. For your for the woman in your life, if you look at a man, um, you can you know a lot about him if you look at his wife. Is she happy? Uh, is, is there a, is there a, is there a uh, encouragement uh, between the two of them? Do they lay down their lives? Cindy does so much for me that I don't even know she does. You know, all, all I know is there's that she just takes care of me and look. Oh, Cindy did this for me. Oh, Cindy did that for me without without her even being asked. And so I'm I'm learning from her to slow down and listen. We're talking to Genevieve Konecki, and uh, she's written the book Authentic, The Authentic Catholic Woman, based uh, uh, largely on the theology of the body of St. Saint, of Saint John Paul II and uh, his letter to women back in 1995. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, but I want to invite you guys uh, to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, uh, you can see uh, Genevieve, uh, my interview with her, uh, there, instead of just listening to it on the radio. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, uh, when I trained for both of my black belts, I was injured. Uh, first time I had a meniscus injury. The second time I had a real bad torn calf ligament or calf injury. Uh, and my sensei said, you know, you should sit out the test. You know, and it's a whole six-month test, and now I'm getting close to the final test, and now you should sit it out because you're injured. And I remember I said the first time, uh, you know, if I'm ever in a fight, and the ninjutsu is a combative art, um, I'm probably going to get injured. I know how to. I need to know how to fight while injured. That's what we are as Catholic men. We need to learn to fight while injured. We have a fallen nature, but every athlete knows that you have to work around your injuries. As an athlete, like right now at this moment, I don't have a single injury other than a cut on my back from falling on the reef, but I don't have any real injury. But normally most athletes have some sort of injury that they have to work around and press on and continue. And so as men of God, we need to continue to fight though we have a wounded nature and when we do that we get stronger uh, muscle is gained through resistance training the adversity that we face as men in the world we need to turn our face to that adversity and say the words of my, my black my motto for my first degree black belt was from king david lead me to the rock too high to climb and i will climb it that means i have to uh, change as a person with my mind and my heart i need to grow as a person to climb that wall, but I need God's power and grace too. I need to learn to rely on that. And then another place he said, by thee I can crush a troop, by thee I can leap a wall, by thee I can bend a bow of bronze. Though wounded uh, by Christ's power and healing grace, we can continue to fight the good fight, as St. As Paul said. 
and men, uh, women, I know you're loving this 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 uh, this uh, radio interview with Genevieve Konecki. I love her name. It means the Great White Wave, by the way. But I've always had a love for that name for some reason. And she's written a, written a book, uh, The Authentic Catholic Woman. To, let me ask you this question. This is, I, and I know this was intentional on your part. You could have written The Authentic Woman, but you called it The Authentic Catholic Woman. The Catholic, the, the, under, the, the understanding that Catholicism brings the woman is essential to being fully, to be fully the icon that, that God intends yes. her to be. Yes, yes. The, the interesting thing is, is um, no one can dispute the beauty and the enthusiasm of Protestant women. But what's missing in their faith is both the Blessed Mother and the church as we understand it, as, as the sacrament of God. And that's huge, Genevieve. It's that's huge. huge. I they love my, single, yeah, I yeah. love the Catholic, uh, the, the Pro, my Protestant brothers and sisters. I went to Baylor University. I, great mem- members of the Protestants are part of my, my long ride home show, but it's just, yeah, there's just this, this there's just this, the, the mother of God, Mary, the Is icon, missing. the per- most what perfect even- creature ever made. Right. Uh, is almost is thrown out of their whole understanding. You know, they hardly, she was just the, the conduit that Jesus was born through, and she did a good job raising him, maybe. But the Catholic understanding of Mary. Right. S- but, go ahead. But this, this is where the church is so important because a lot of broken women, especially women with mother wounds, have a great difficulty coming to Mary. And you say, here is your mother, this is the relationship, and they back off and they, they're not used to that maternal, warm, healthy relationship. That's why to also have the church as the paradigm for women, and of course Mary is the first fruit and the most ter- perfect image of the church, but that aside, to come to an, what people think is an institution, they almost think in some ways that's a little bit safer because it's something they can read about and walk in and, and, and turn around and, and see different concrete things. But to see the church ultimately as your mother and to say this is what a healthy mother does this is how a a healthy mother welcomes her children nourishes them um, suckers them and turns around and and polishes them and hands them to god the father that's what's so important Our, our brothers and sisters outside of the church have decided that a single parent household is good enough and the church says absolutely not you need the bride and the groom in order to have healthy children and Protestants have thrown away, like I say, both the Blessed Mother and the Church. So there's no feminine paradigm by which women can understand how they are called to love virginally, bridally, and motherly. And all of those areas, of course, Mary was virgin, bride, and mother. Most of us only get one or two of them, um, you know, in the course of a lifetime. But we are spiritual mothers, and that's what we're—you talked about, about the um, spiritual DNA— and the spiritual, the, the soul that we have, you're called to motherhood. How are you going to do this if you don't have a relationship with the, the Blessed Mother, don't understand how the church works, and don't understand the healthy complementarity between husband and wife? They're Why Mary, don't the, you? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. They're, no, Mary, 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 they're Mary-phobic. They're yeah, Mary-phobic. Yeah. They're afraid, like, well, if I, if I think even for a moment about Mary, then somehow... I'm denigrating my relationship with Jesus or with, or with the Holy Trinity. Right. And yet, and yet right. you know, I, I love Father Don Calloway. I'm sure you do, too. Yes, of I, course. I yes. spent a lot of time with him. We were in Jerusalem. Uh, we were in Israel last year. In fact, Cindy and I got to, you know what tandem surfing is, by the way, Genevieve? No. <laughs> it's where you lift a woman when you surf. Oh. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm a world champion at that. And Cindy and I went to Tel Aviv with Father Don, and we, we got to go tandem surfing in Tel Aviv. It blew everybody's minds. But... Um, Father Don's mom was there. Do you think it was took away? Do you think Father Don got upset when I talked to his mom? Of course not. Oh, and isn't I, that a beautiful? And I asked beautiful. her more about like, what is Father Don really like? You know. Yes. And do you think it'd be? Do you think you could ask Father Don if, if maybe we could, uh, you know, stop, and take a break here or something? She would ask him, and she adored him. She was always she had a whole bundle of his books with her, you know, promoting him. And so, yeah, it's that beautiful, and yet, yet there's the, the Protestants, you don't have to be afraid of Mary. Right. She's the perfect right. creature. All nations will call her blessed. Call her blessed, Protestants. It's okay. 
it's okay. And that's the one side, but even within the church, um, the brokenness that, that we have or the fear of, of this healthy relationship with men, it's, it's a legitimate fear. A lot of bad things have happened in the last 50, 75 years. And family life, to tell you the truth, no matter what generation, is always messy. And so I, I don't ever want to disparage somebody's antipathy for the, for the church or for the Blessed Mother, because I'm going to assume it's personal. Mm. But the beauty is... And it is laid out very carefully, very systematically in the in my second book, how to go about f- uh, forgiving those who have injured you, to help to heal the mother wounds, the father wounds, you know, all the different areas where you did genuinely love and got smacked down or it was not received in the way that it ought to have been received. Once you get through that, then you look at men entirely differently. Now, we're never going to think the same. There, there's another daughter. It was very funny. She had a book. She said, you know, it wasn't a great book, but the the title was priceless. Men are waffles, women are spaghetti. (laughs) And you just have to understand, we're we're just not going to think the same way. Our brains brains are wired differently, and that's okay. But um, the complementarity that flows when the father and the mother are on the same sheet of music and do choose to love, the, 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 the family that flows through their fingers Real children and spiritual children, and I, I'll bet you have lots and lots of spiritual children, Bear, that have come through your fingers, your father than, to more than just those to whom you gave birth. You know, you, and that's, uh, that's key. I love that, that same sheet of music. You know, we, we have our different instruments, we different, yes. different things that we play. I'd be playing the ukulele, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you, but we, but we bring different. We, but it all comes into that place of harmony. Now, I got a tough question for you because you've only got about three minutes to answer this. Okay patriarchy there's this whole uh, beat down on patriarchy now which is unfortunate there are men who behave badly I've tried to build you guys up because I think the world of men but there are men who behave badly anybody who besmirches the name of patriarchy has actually committed the sin of blasphemy that's the risk that men run when they abuse their fatherhood, when they abuse their strength, when they uh, abuse their authority, when they abuse any kind of um, responsibility that they have, you have a higher risk because you bear the name of father, you get your fatherhood from God the Father. So when you sin against your fatherhood, which as I said, the job of a father is to lay down and die for those entrusted to his care, you have also committed the sin of blasphemy. Unfortunately, men behaving badly have have caused this idea that patriarchy is a bad thing. Patriarchy is marvelous. That's the design that God infused into creation was this hierarchy that the man leads and he chooses very carefully when he weds a trusty lieutenant to gather all the data that he will need in order to make good decisions. You know, we have to go, Genevieve. We've run out of time, yeah. so we got to have you back. But what you just said is a, just a perfect picture of, of my marriage with Cindy. She just, she has so much wisdom. She sees things I don't see. She's, she's, uh, you know, always bringing me back to center where I need to be, and, and just a beautiful image. And as men, as fathers, um, patriarchy. God is father. We're not. He's not kind of like a father. He is father, and we're, we're, we're to be an icon of that. But we've run out of time. Genevieve, we'll be back. Uh, we've got to have you back on the show. This is the Bear Wasik Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 